again, everyone. I've had a few requests to talk a little bit more about Opus 88 fountain pens. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. What you see here is my entire collection of Opus 88s. They have clearly multiplied. I started with one, uh, which was my first one. I think my first one was this guy, which is an Opus 88 Picnic. And then I bought this one, which is the Opus 88 Demo. And then the others came in quick su succession. Um, I was able to find the majority of these for less than retail price, mostly at Endless Pens, but uh, a couple of them because I, I specifically wanted the models, um, especially this, I think this is the Fantasia, which is sort of a mini pocket pen, uh, I did pay a full price for because I wanted to have that particular model. As of today, I don't have any, um, I don't have my eyes on any new Opus 88 models or existing models. This is a pretty good selection. Uh, one thing I will say is that none of these have their original nibs, but that said, I will say that the Opus 88 nibs are actually quite lovely. And I do have the Opus 88 nibs that used to be on these on several other pens. So part of the reason why I did not keep the pens uh, or the nibs on these is that they are very easily swappable because, uh, let's see, I've pretty much got an even divide of four and four. So these four here take size six nibs with the jo the Yovo housing. Um, so any, any pen, any fountain pen that has a Yovo nib housing will fit on these. These are size six, these are size five, the uh, Yowo nib housing will fit on all of these. I think in some older models, they were using Bach nibs, so I cannot speak to those. Um, and I don't, I don't have any of those that are of the older version that had Bach nibs. So if you do have a pretty old version, I would um, research a little as to what type of nib and housing is in your older Opus 88. So, um, so like I was saying, these don't have the original nibs because they can be swapped out for any other uh, size five or size six Yowo nib. And uh, one of the big companies that uses Yowo nibs is Franklin Kristoff. And they have a lot of custom grind nibs that are uh, the SIG nib, which is special to them, which they do in house. And then they have a nib grinder that does uh, some cursive italic and stub nibs for them and needlepoint um, that does those separately. And the reason why I feel like these pens are really great for those types of nibs is because you have such a large ink capacity here. If you have a very wet flowing uh, nib, these are great for that because uh, you have a big ink reservoir. They are all dropper fill pens, and I will go a little bit into uh, detail about the actual mechanism for these pens. They pretty much all operate the same um, in its basic function, but they're just little different sizes. So that's kind of why I have swapped out all the nibs on these. But like I was saying, I have put the Opus 88 nibs, which I, th I think are, are Yowo nibs. I have put them on other pens just because they really are nice writers and they usually come on the pens pretty smooth and tuned well. So, um, you know, example for, for like a, a fine nib or an extra fine nib, I have that on another pen that's a cartridge converter where I don't need a huge ink capacity. Some of these don't need a huge ink capacity either, but I really like the fact that they do have it. So let's go ahead and talk about the smaller ones first. I'm gonna put these larger ones off to the side. And so these smaller ones, like I said, take size five nibs. Actually, let me bring out one of the larger ones just to do a, a comparison of the nib size so that you can see what a size six versus what a size five nib looks like. So um, the size six is quite a bit larger than the size five. So the size five is on the left, the size six is on the right. Quite a difference. Um, 
difference in performance sometimes you will get a different quality of line even in the same uh, nib size for size 6 and size 5 but um, I think it really just depends on what is comfortable for you for writing I'm comfortable with both um, with the size 6 you're, you're, where you're grabbing the pen your your hand just by the very nature of the size of the length of the nib you're going to be a little bit further back from the paper than you will be with a size five nib where you'll be closer to the paper because the length of the nib is shorter um, and these pens also happen to have uh, less width than these size six nibbed pens which are now over here um, and that doesn't have to be, but it, it does, the, the narrower and shorter nib does allow for a smaller bodied pen, which uh, if that's what you're looking for, that might be um, a reason to pick these over the size six ones. So these two here are both Opus 88 Picnics, and this is, I believe, a discontinued, actually, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see that. This, I believe, is a discontinued model these are essentially the same in their design other than the color. This one's green, this one's brown, but uh, and they do have different nibs, but I'll go ahead and show you. And this is gonna be the same of all of the pens. So you've got your nib up here, you have your ink reservoir here, you can uh, unscrew this piece here, which I will do very carefully here. So you unscrew this whole nib piece up at the top, and then you can fill it in that reservoir. So that's how you fill it, because it is an eyedropper, you would just use an eyedropper, and they all come with an eyedropper. Uh, sometimes they come with a smaller one like this, and then sometimes they come with a larger one like this. I think the larger pens come with the larger eyedropper either one will work for either pen it doesn't matter <laughs> uh, just make sure that you don't fill it any higher than where the threads begin in this little area because otherwise it might overflow when you're filling it and that sort of thing so then the other uh, thing that is on here is a little end twist piece here and this because there is a rod and in here I would say you could see it better on the uh, demonstrator versions that are clear, but because they have ink in them, it's it's going to be about the same. <laughs> so with, uh, you, there is a little rod that has a little rubber end that will, when this is closed, seal off the nib. So basically when you put that down, all you're going to have access to is the ink that is in this part of the pen from here to the nib, which actually can be quite a bit. So if you're doing short writing, you can leave it in this position, this closed position. But if you're going to be doing longer writing, you probably want access to the rest of the ink that's here in this uh, reservoir. So you will unscrew just a few turns. Um, I think they say in the instructions how many turns to do it, so I would just follow those instructions. Uh, but, you know, the, the more you unscrew, the more this will pull back. And at a certain point, you can completely pull it out. So it's kind of like a piston fill in that, or a vac fill in that regard. But this is an eyedropper pen, so you're not going to be vacuum filling it. And so the rod will pull all the way out. And you can, you can actually pull the rod all the way out when you're filling it to get the rod out of the way. And you can use the rod to gently push ink up into the nib when you first put ink in here to get the pen started. Um, you could just screw back and forth. That, that works as well, but uh, that might take a little longer. I tried that at the beginning when I first got these and then... Um, realize that that was kind of a long process and I'll show you how the nib screws off here and I'm just doing this example on this one all of these other pens have the same components and the same and work the same way in each aspect so I'm just going to get sort of a dirty paper towel so that I can take off this nib so basically what I'm doing is I'm just screwing the nib off here I'm going to hold it by its ends so that I don't get ink everywhere and then that comes right off and sometimes the, uh, there will be a little rubber ring that comes off 
but uh, sometimes it's still in there and the rubber ring is very essential for making sure that the ink does not leak out of this pen with these nibs. So make sure that if it comes out, you put it back in after you swap nibs. And there's various washers all throughout the pen, but uh, that's the one that you really need to worry about the most, especially if you're gonna be swapping nibs. So when you uh, screw the nib unit back on, just make sure it's tight, but not you know over, over twisted. And there you go. So basically you would just, if you have a nib in its little unit just by itself, you would twist that off, twist the new one on, or if you had it in another pen, you would just twist it off the other pen and then uh, twist this off and put it in this pen. So it's very, very easy to swap out. It's In fact, it's even easier than cartridge converter fill Yowo uh, pens because with the cartridge or converter, you have to take the cartridge or converter out before you unscrew the nib off of the pen, just because it's connected. The cartridge and converter are connected to the nib because they essentially uh, seat into the, the very bottom of the nib, which is in the pen. So you have to take that off in order to take the nib off. So that is how all of these pens work. So these two are identical because they're both um, picnic models. This is a pocket style pen. Uh, I believe this is called a fan Fantasia. And um, you could use it unposted, but it's pretty short. So it does have the ability to screw onto the back. And I believe that this is the red amber color. These are also discontinued and I think are running out fast at different retailers that have them. I purchased mine at Van S Pens. I will put a link down below to all of these that I can still find online. And uh, so like I said, so that screws onto the back and with that, it's actually quite a comfortable length for me. It's a little bit back heavy because the cap is fairly heavy, but um, it's still pretty good. And when I, I'm going to pen test all of these, so uh, you'll find out what nibs I have on all of these when I do that. So one other characteristic of this little one, um, so it has all the same parts. You have this to unscrew and then you fill this and the nib can unscrew. And then this back part is the little, I don't know what we wanna call this, the back end, <laughs> which screws off just like the other one that I showed you. You can use your, I always use my hand for that, but it does actually have a little, um, sort of almost like a screwdriver in the back of the cap so that you can do it with the back of the cap, which will also screw it off as you can see. But I don't find it necessary and I find it kind of fiddly to do that. Um, the unfortunate part is I think this little metal part does make the cap heavier because they thought they were being clever with that. Uh, but if you have bigger hands and can't, get into this little knob, that might be useful. So then this model is the Opus 88 Coloro. And um, I think both the Coloro and the Fantasia have um, ebonite as part of the body in addition to acrylic. So this rougher part here is ebonite and then the rest of the pieces are acrylic. I think the ends, the part of the cap, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, this one I think, is the red color, which is very nice. I actually quite like this. I think I like this color combo a little bit better than this one, because this one really is brown with an amber cap, and this one is red with an amber cap. Same color, so that I kind of keep them that way in the case together. So this, again, has the same pieces and same functionality. Nib comes off, this part comes off to fill it, and then this part screws off to either let ink flow to the nib or you can pull out the rod that is in there for various purposes, for either getting it out of the way or for pushing ink up into the nib when you're first starting your pen. So let's go ahead and look at these larger nibbed models, which are also very much larger generally. You can see um, they're quite a bit thicker. They're all pretty much the same thickness uh, maybe this uh, this new one here, which I'll, I'll go to at the end, is a little bit more narrow than the other ones. Um, but these three are certainly very girthy and uh, they don't post. Not, all three of these do not post. All four of these do post. Um, actually, that's not entirely true. The, the Omar, which is this one, will post and so will this one, but this one's sort of like an in-between size, which you'll see. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and go with the clear one first. These are both demonstrators, the Opus 88 demonstrators, which have flat top and bottom. I have this one screwed out because I have been using it and I'll show you why. <laughs> um, these are the same model, just different colors. This one is a gray and this one is the completely clear. It's only darker because of the ink that is in here. And on this pen, I have, I'll, again, I'll show you which nibs are on each pen, but in this pen, I have a Franklin Christoph Music nib, which really, really benefits from the large ink capacity because this nib uses a ton of ink, but it makes a really nice broad line. And I've actually been using it for titles, which it's kind of perfect for, um, but I'm gonna leave that undone. And before I, I um, do writing samples with all of these, I, I will undo the back just so that we can get the maximum ink flow. And so once again, same design, you're gonna have the nib here, which is removable this time with a size six nib. This portion is removable to fill this portion here, and then this little end piece screws out to either let the ink flow or to pull the rod out. So um, this one and this one are pretty much identical, so I won't go into that one yet. This is very similar, but it has a more rounded shape. This is the Opus 88 Omar which I think as far as looks and feel, I like a little bit better than the demo. The only reason why I have two demos is I got, um, well, I got both of them pretty inexpensively, but I got the second one way on sale. So it was a really great deal. The Omar is a little bit more popular, I think. So um, it's not as readily available as, at, as deep of a discount. So this is the demonstrator version. They do have some that have various colors on different parts of the pen. They're actually very pretty. And um, this one has a, uh, well, I, again, I'll show you the nibs later, but again, same pieces. Removable nib, remove this area to fill the pen, and then the back screws off. Okay, so then this one is the Jazz, which I think is a newer model. And I know that the Jazz the Omar and perhaps the demonstrator are all still going to be uh, produced. These four, I think, are being discontinued. I wonder if they're phasing towards larger nibbed pens generally, but I don't know. Um, but this one's a fairly newer model. This is the Holiday, which has a special colored um, trim here, which is a little bit darker, sort of like a charcoal colored trim, and the entire pen is frosted. And um, even with that, though, <laughs> same pieces, nib, section, you know, ink reservoir, and that little back that screws. And um, this one is a little bit thinner in profile, both in width, well, it's actually a little taller, um, but it does feel a little smaller overall. And both this one and this one will post but this one's very large when posted and a little uncomfortable. So I don't, I don't generally post that one. This one is a little more comfortable when posted, but still I find it a little bit big. So I'm actually gonna be doing samples of all of these without them posted today. So I'm gonna get out some paper here. So this is a Nemesine notebook, which I have in my um, Galen leather folio and I'm going to put these back in their order they were in before so that we can swatch them in that order and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the paper pretty well and then I'm going to screw the back end a little bit off for each ink sample. So this one, let's see if I can remember, I may not remember what's on each of these nibs, but I believe that this is a medium cursive italic. And this one I actually will post because it's comfortable that way. So this one is the Opus 88 Picnic in green with a medium cursive italic nib. 
And uh, then the ink that I have in here, whoops, I'm going off the camera there, move that down. And then the ink that I have in here is Diamine Tobacco Burst. And because this is a cursive italic, you're going to be able to get various line widths and the downstroke is going to be heavier than the side stroke. So that is the green picnic. Again, I'm going to cinch the back back on, and then we're gonna move on to the brown one, which again, I'll have to take a look at. Okay, so undo this end just a little bit again. So this one, see if I can oh it looks like I might need to get the ink flowing a little bit it might be because I had it open for so long to, earlier to show you how things work I'm just gonna press down on that a little bit there we go so this one is the opus 88 picnic in brown with a bold italic nib and then the ink in here is Ackerman SBRE brown which is one of my all-time favorite inks again depending on the angle at which you hold it you can get some Good line variation. You see it's just a little bit thicker than the medium. Okay, and I'm gonna close that up. That is something that you need to keep in mind when you're operating with fountain pens. You shouldn't leave them open for an extended period of time because otherwise they can dry out. Okay, and this one I'm going to pull that out a little bit. And then this is the Opus 88. Uh, Fantasia in amber. I think that's the color. And this one has a fine Franklin Christoph Sig nib. And then the ink is Franklin Christoph Honeycomb. I clearly have a similar <laughs> a similar color theme going on with these pens and the inks that are in them. Ooh. Yes, and that's one thing you want to try not to do. Don't hurl your pen because you will probably get ink everywhere, including your clothes which I think I may have avoided just now, but just narrowly. I'm surprised I'm not covered with ink every single day. Okay, and then this is the Cola Row. I may have to move my notebook up a little bit. And this one also posts pretty comfortably. So this one is the Opus 88. Polaro, red, and I believe, yeah, so this one is a, with a medium stub nib, and these so far have all been from Franklin Christoph, and then this ink, I believe, is Sailor Manio Ume, which is a lovely, lovely ink. You'll get a little bit less uh, variation difference between downstroke and side stroke with the stub. Okay. And then the next one here is this demonstrator, which I will not post because it does not post. 
I'm gonna open up the end there. And then this is the Opus 88 demo. I should just do this with regular writing. Demo gray with a needlepoint. nib and this has in it lemon toolbar atmospheric cloudy day which is a permanent ink and I use this for uh, sketching so and it's really great for sketching because you have a really big ink reservoir and if you're going to be taking it around and going around with it you're going to have plenty of ink to work with all right so now we're going to go on to this other demonstrator and this is going to be kind of like the polar opposite of that last pen so this one is an opus 88 demo with Franklin Kristoff music nib. And this, I believe, has Robert Oster. Great Southern Ocean. So this is another one that you'll get a lot of variation depending on how you're holding the pen. You get quite a huge downstroke and a narrow side to side stroke. But like I said, it's really great for um, what I'm using it for is like titles of things like that. And I'm going to leave that one open because I am using it at the moment. And then let's go on to this Opus 88 Omar. And I won't post this just because it's a little unwieldy, but I will open the back here. And I think that this is the only, well, sort of the only um, nib that is not a Franklin Christoph nib. Uh oh, you're not gonna be able to see that unless I move that up, sorry about that. This is the Opus 88 um, Omar demo with a fine architect nib and this is a nib that I actually got from Peyton Street pens they do do their own nibs and the ink that is in here is uh, Franklin Christoph Urushi Red. So the difference between a cursive italic and an architect is you're going to get the narrow line up and down and the broader line side to side. And depending on how you hold it, you'll get different line variation there. So I do have to give you a little disclaimer though. When I got this particular fine architect nib, I did need to smooth it myself before I felt like it was usable. This is actually lovely now. I love it the way it is, but I did have to smooth it quite a bit. All right, so this is the last one. And this one I've actually shown on the channel before as part of my fountain pen favorites because it is a lovely, lovely combo. This is the Opus. 88 and this is the jazz uh, holiday with a broad architect nib and this is a Mark Bacchus grind but uh, the nib is Franklin Christoph as you can see there it's quite nice and then the ink that is in here is Sailor Manyo Yomagi, which is just a beautiful, beautiful 
ink and like above, the downstroke is thinner than the side stroke. All right. And, you know, this one also would probably be a pretty big ink guzzler if I didn't have this big reservoir here. And, um, you know, this was full by the when I got it, and I have actually gone down, you know, a little over a quarter of the ink in here. So it holds a lot of ink. I'm gonna zoom out so that you can see all of those together, and then I'm also going to get these back out and put them on either side here. So there you go. Those are my Opus 88s, and I hope that gives you a little bit more detail about these pens. I think they're fantastic. Um, I'm essentially buying them as like an ink, an ink holder and a nib holder, so uh, so that I can have a lot of flexibility to move nibs around. I think for the most part, these nibs are where I probably will have them at least semi permanently, because I really like the combo. But you know, I could always switch them around again, and I really like having that ability to do that. Um, but like I said, even the original nibs that were on these were really great and smooth. They're just, you know, standard, fine, medium, broad stub. Uh, I think they also have extra fine. So those are perfectly passable if you want to get one of these pens, use it for its big, big ink capacity. And then, you know, you always have the option later on to swap out a nib if you buy a specialty nib or, or whatever. Um, or you could just use it forever with the Opus 88 nib, which is perfectly fine. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to ask any questions about these pens below and I'll answer as soon as I can. Feel free to subscribe so you can keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Maybe I already said that, I don't know. Uh, I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.